Welcome back to Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto in the Soapberry Shop World Gymnastics Challenge. You're looking at the floor of the gardens as we get ready for the second half of our competition. And you know, it's always nice to work with a champion. For Elfie Schlegel, the beginnings were at York Memorial Gymnastics Club right here in Toronto. By her very expression, we should have known here was something special. And Elfie never failed to deliver. 1978 at the Commonwealth Games in Edmonton, she claimed team and individual all-around gold medals for Canada. It was the debut for gymnastics at these games. Elfie was a legend. Oh, wasn't that nice? I mean, it's got some great, great memories, and it's just nice to be still involved in the sport. Alfie, a great moment for you here at Maple Leaf Gardens in 1980. You won the bronze medal in the World Cup, the first ever international medal for Canada in the sport of gymnastics. But right now, let's talk about a champion who's in a bit of trouble. Vitaly Sherbo, the Olympic champion, is currently second in the competition, the Yuri Kaki of Italy. Well, really not much of a surprise, Scott. I think uh, the rest of the world is catching up to, to Vitaly Sherbo. And remember, uh, this year at the World University Games, Keki almost beat Sherbo. We're just coming off the ring exercise where Keki is world champion, but what Sherbo is known for is not giving up. An encouraging sign for the Canadian fans. Stella Ume is in second place behind Gina Gojan of Romania, and a real fight developing. There. Oh, this battle is going to go right to the very end. If you ask Stella, I'm sure she is not surprised at all. She's exactly where she wants to be, and quite simply, her gymnastics looks terrific. All right, Alfie, still a long way to go. We're at the midway point of the competition. Right now, let's continue with the women's balance beam. There it is, Alfie, the beam, one of the most formidable obstacles in all of gymnastics, and this is Stella Ume, surprisingly, I suppose, in second place right now. This is a very strong field, but a very confident Stella Ume. When Stella is on, she is on and right off the top on a very difficult mount, a layout on the balance beam, just a little bit of a balance break, but this is a huge line for Stella. Wonderfully done. Now she was right on that element. This is a new balance beam routine that we, that is different from the national championships. Stella's planned a couple of extra new skills. There's one of them right there, and that of course is going to give her some of those most needed bonus points with the new introduction of the new code. talked about the difficulty of this apparatus particularly in this setting with so many people in the stands it's only four inches wide the balance beam concentration so important uh, it requires your full attention full focus and of course they train in settings in the gym with the music blaring and other athletes right beside them so they're quite at home competing in this atmosphere second new skill for Stella right here again adding some extra bonus points she seems just a little bit cautious. This routine isn't flowing as well as it normally does. I'm not quite sure for the reason. Sometimes Stella says that she's afraid to fall, but so far things look good. Just her dismount, double back, one step on the landing, but overall she's having a dynamite routine. Second place after two apparatus, Stella Ume will have to score well to keep her position. Extremely difficult tumbling pass right there. Four skills in a row with two layouts, but she was dead on. 9-3-2-5 as she talks it over with Svetlana Dakteva. Stella always appears to be happy regardless of the score. Elena Pascu now of Belarus and Alfie watch this mount. A blind front summy right into a jump skill. That's incredibly difficult, but this routine is just going to blow you away. She has so many difficult skills. Now, that skill was first performed by Olga Corbett, but Elena Piscun adds a full twist, which makes it that much more difficult. Only 15 years old. We had an interview with her before the competition in her native tongue of Russian. Tremendously confident, really believes that she will soon be a world champion. Scott, she could very well become a world champion on this event. She has an element that she's getting set for right here that very few in this world can perform. A combination, full twist on top of the balance beam. And again, you mentioned it's only four inches wide. There's not a whole lot of room for error. I'm extremely impressed with Piscoon, her difficulty. She has more than enough. 
just the dismount left. She's planning a double summy in a pike position. Wow, what a great exercise. Now on the side, you can see the balance beam, how narrow it is. And then on the right-hand side in the replay, that's our eye level. But I'll tell you, there's not a lot of room for error on skills like this. And they are top of the line, very, very difficult. Nursing a bit of a headache, but a tremendous performance by Elena Pascuna of Belarus, 9.75. The routine start value was 10, and she scored oh so well. Gina Gojan, the current leader at the midway point from Romania. The Romanians have all but owned this event, and that dates back to Nadia Comaneci at the 1976 Olympic Games. I remember watching her there. She was picture perfect. Gina Gojan certainly carries on with that fine balance beam tradition. You'll notice on her right ankle, Alfie, it's still bandaged. We saw that same ankle bandaged at the 1993 World Championships in Birmingham. And that was back in April. She's still nursing the injury. And this has to be tremendously difficult, the beating that the ankle will take. Extremely difficult. Maybe not so much on this apparatus, but certainly on the events like floor exercise where there's a lot of tumbling required and also the vaulting. This is an athlete who is totally unfazed by the audience, by the media. She just focus in, focuses in on her routines, performs them beautifully. She has all the difficulty. Certainly one of the great Romanian gymnasts to have emerged since the Barcelona Olympics. Very aware of the legacy of the great Nadia Comaneci hopes to follow in that kind of tradition. A little different look to the dismount by Gina from the other competitors. A combination of backhand drink into a double tuck and all in a day's work. No problems at all. Who will get another look at it. Very square. Shoulders and hips to the balance beam. Just a very, very small hop on a dismount. Elena Pascoon scored a 9.75. 9.725 for Gina Gojan. You can't tell from that reaction, whether she's happy or not. Tatiana Lysenko now of Ukraine. A reminder, bronze medal at the World Championships in the all-around competition, a very accomplished gymnast. And very accomplished on this apparatus. An easy opening for Tatiana, a layout on the bounce beam, the same mount that Stella Ume used. Three layouts in a row, just a little bit of a check there. Unbelievably difficult. We're seeing more and more of the female athletes on balance beam working in combination skills, skills that take them from one end of the balance beam right to the other. A blind landing, perfectly done. Of course, that will give her some extra bonus points. Boy, is she ever keeping up with the youth of, in this competition? You'd never know she's 18 years old. In most cases, it's the Chinese and the Eastern Europeans who compete for top honors in the balance beam. No difference here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Tatiana Lysenko of Ukraine. An outstanding routine, but can she catch Elena Pascoon? of Belarus. Just her dismount left, Scott. She plan, planning to do a double summy. She'll have to stick the dismount. Whoa, this is going to be close. A fine, fine exercise, and she just puts a stamp on it on her dismount. Again, take a look at this skill. On the left of the screen, you can see the overhead version, and then your eye level on the right of the screen. You can't afford to be off at all. It's just four inches wide, folks. The ultimate in precision. There's the score, 9-7-2-5. She ties Gina Gojan. Here are the results after the women's beam. Gina Gojan of Romania hangs on to the lead. Elena Pascoon is next. Tatiana Lysenko is third. It is very close. The men's vault is next. You're watching the Soapberry Shop World Gymnastics Challenge on CBC Sports. We are back at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Rotation number four for the men. And Cheney Umphrey of Albuquerque, New Mexico, currently tied for second with Vitaly Sherbo. 
And of course, on this event, the men only get one shot at it, so they have to make it count. A Sukahara-style vault in a full twist position. I'm a little disappointed. Uh, a bit of form breaks in, in Cheney's vault. I expected him to be a little bit more powerful on this event. Ian Art Sherlock talking over a 9.2. The start value, LP only 9.5. And so now an opportunity for Vitaly Sherbo of Belarus, the reigning world champion, to break out. That familiar right arm goes up, the signal that Sherbo is ready. Well, certainly this is an event where Sherbo can pull himself a little bit closer to Keki. He has probably the strongest vault in this competition. Yurchenko double twist, and look at him. He is a fighter through and through. This vault is out of a 9.8, and you can bet he's going to score as close to that as possible. In fact, the only deduction should be right there. Determination on Sherbo's face. Alex Barr, 9.70 for Vitaly Sherbo. That's exactly what he needed. Now, the current leader, Yuri Keki of Italy, talked about the fact that he's a great individual gymnast on the rings, but can he be an all-around champion? You know, this event is going to take its toll on that Achilles. Having some difficulty trying to stick that landing, but nevertheless, he gave away a few very important tents right there. The vault was not bad. A little bit of a form break there. He bent his knees in order to get the rotation in. And you can see right there, the judges are going to kill him on the landing. A little bit of pain. Perhaps that Achilles tendon hurting. Yuri Keki of Italy waiting for the score. 9.05. So now the door is open for Vitaly Sherbo. Our first look at Paul Bowler of Manchester, and he has high hopes for a breakthrough here in Toronto. I'd really like to get a medal on the vault, whatever colour, you know, to take that back to back home and, and so that people can see that Britain are on the map. Neil did it last year. And we, we've done it a little, or I've done it a little bit on vault this year. But just to put Britain on the map and and as, and to put the icing on the cake to, to all the hard work and training and things that, that's gone on. And really just thoroughly enjoy the trip because at the moment I'm, I'm loving it. Well, Paul mentioned Neil Thomas, his teammate from Great Britain. Neil won a silver medal on the floor routine in Birmingham at the World Championships. Let's see what Paul can do. Impressed with this athlete, Scott. A one and a half twist. That's a blind landing. Boy, you have to be ready to absorb this landing. It's a real jolt to the body, but Paul does an excellent job at that. Final Great vaulter. Paul Bowler of Great Britain, 9.55, and he scores very well out of a start value of 9.8. And as we talked about, there's Yuri Keki nursing a bit of a pain, that in his left knee. After the men's fault, more rotations. Yuri Keki of Italy, 37.45. It's getting close. Vitaly Sherbo is next. 